so yeah, my name is Julian. I, or, I work for AWS. I've been working with them for uh, three and a half years now. And, uh, and I fly around a lot, meeting developers, um, data scientists, machine learning engineers, whatever you guys call yourselves. That's fine, as long as you're in tech. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, uh, a first, uh, first presentation on uh, what we call the high-level services. And as you will see, these are uh, super easy to use. So um, who, who has never done machine learning before? It's okay, come on. I'm filmed, you're not, right? <laughs> okay, so that's fine, right? Uh, you're in the right place. These services are uh, high level, they're super easy to use. In the second talk, we'll go much deeper into machine learning, training with uh, your own data sets, uh, with your own algos. So yeah, proper machine learning. So you will need coffee by, by this point, I, I'm sure. So feel free to get calories and caffeine outside. Um, and then, just as a, as a quick bonus, I will do a, a short introduction on uh, container services available on the AWS. Um, and I think that after that, we have a, a deeper dive on, on containers. So it's going to be a long, a long evening, right? So I hope you, uh, you had a good night's sleep and you had coffee. So let's get started. Um, so as you can imagine, Amazon has been doing ML for a long time now. And uh, of course, it all starts from uh, uh, the uh, good old times at Amazon.com. And very early on, in the first few months even of, of Amazon.com, it was pretty clear that the, uh, the shopping experience had to, be, uh, the online shopping experience had to be personalized. Okay, it's uh, compared to, you know, going into a bookstore, because at the time that really was what Amazon was about, right? Uh, Jeff Bezos selling books from his garage. Um, he realized that he had to bring something else, not just prices, right? Also a, a personal experience. So very early on, they started to do uh, book recommendations. And then of course, quickly, as they added more products, everything became personalized. And if you go to, to Amazon.com today, or any of the uh, retail websites, you'll, you, you'll see uh, you know, stuff that you might like. And, uh, and of course, you know, what I like is my page is gonna be quite different from uh, from yours, unless you're into extreme metal and, uh, and GPUs. But uh, if you're a normal person, probably you're seeing something else, right? Um, and then it's not just a website. It, it was also um, machine learning found its way into literally every corner of the company, all the back office. Uh, and you probably you've seen on YouTube those uh, uh, Amazon robots that move around autonomously in the fulfillment centers. Of course, that's based on machine learning. Uh, we're experimenting with drone deliveries not a joke, uh, still being tested. And of course, again, these use machine learning for uh, route planning, computer vision, etc. cetera. Uh, you're probably quite familiar with the, uh, Alexa device, uh, the Alexa family of devices, the Echo devices. And of course, that stuff is also based on machine learning for uh, uh, speech processing, text speech, etc. NLP. Um, and the latest fun addition to that is Amazon Go. So um, it's actually a couple of stores, uh, grocery stores in Seattle, uh, which are open to the public. So if you ever find yourself in Seattle, uh, just download the mobile app and you can go and, and check that out. It's really downtown. And you can go in, uh, use your QR code to, to go in, pick some stuff, go out. And no one's uh, chasing you and no one's shooting at you, right? It's the US, remember. Um, but you, you don't have to actually queue and there's no cashier. And the way this works is uh, you have lots of tiny cameras on the ceiling that look at what you picked, uh, what you put in your, in your bag and put back on the shelf maybe. And they, they charge you based on that. Okay. So it, it's pretty funny. I tried messing around with it, but couldn't steal anything. Do you know how accurate is that? It is pretty accurate, yeah, it is pretty accurate. Uh, so it, there are plenty of YouTube videos on how to mess with the system, which usually involve, you know, uh, having a big coat, using your coat to hide yourself from the ceiling cameras, and, and <laughs> yeah, there's still somebody in the store, so. But just on the average use, it's like pretty accurate. Oh, yeah, it is super accurate, yeah, it's super accurate. Uh, and now there's a silly challenge inside of Amazon, I don't know if I should tell you that. 
um, to, to beat the record for the fastest in and out thing. It's like, you know, how fast can you go in, pick somebody, uh, pick somebody, pick something and get out? I think the record's probably four or five seconds. And it usually involves having two people, you know, one inside, one outside, one, one anyway. My colleagues are playing those games. I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know, I'm too busy for that, I guess. Or too old. So anyway, <coughs> I work for AWS. You know, we're very proud of the Amazon heritage. But I work for AWS, and the reason why I fly around the world is this. I want to make sure all of you get a chance to use machine learning. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting or if you're an expert. Um, you know, we should have something for you. We should make it simple to learn and, 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 uh, and run machine learning workloads and deploy models, etc. Okay, so that's the, that's the goal. So as it turns out, we've been building uh, services for a couple of years now. We have uh, quite a few customers. Uh, you know, the number changes every day, but the conservative number is every day uh, over 10,000 customers run machine learning on AWS. Uh, and we have millions of customers using our services globally. And, you know, some big names, look, you know, you would expect to see Netflix and, uh, and Intel and, and a few more. Tinder, I'm not so sure why they use machine learning. Of course, no one here is using it, um, right? Especially if you're filmed. Um, and, in, you know, some startups as well. So it's really, and it's all kinds of businesses. It's not just banks or retail companies. It's all kinds of companies. Our customers find that machine learning is helping them whatever their business is. And um, we've built a stack of services. You know, as I keep saying, when I joined AWS, you could have a slide with all the AWS services on it, okay? Now it's getting difficult to have a slide with all the machine learning services on it. So uh, just to give you uh, some perspective, last year, 2017, we released over 200 machine learning features. Okay, so almost one every day. So the, the pace of innovation uh, on, on behalf of our customers is very, very fast. So you know, every day, literally, or every week, there's new stuff coming out. So we have, three, uh, we have three layers. So again, in this first session, we'll mostly focus on these. And um, we call them AI services or application services. And because the reason is they're really, of course, they're all based on machine learning, as you will see. But you don't need to know the first thing about machine learning to use them. You really call it, just call an API and get the job done, right? So these are great for people who are just getting started. If your concern is, uh, you know, uh, finding objects and images or doing text to speech, as you will see, you can get it done with one single API call. Okay, and as I've said before, and I'm sure I'll say it again, uh, any junior developer can use that stuff in 15 minutes. If they can't, well, consider a career move, right? Because it's really one line of code, right? Just putting a little bit of pressure on you. Okay, and then we have the ML services where you can train with your own data, your own code, et cetera, et cetera, but that's the focus of the second talk. And at the lowest level, of course, we have tools to make it simple to use all the popular uh, machine learning and deep learning libraries and all kinds of uh, nice uh, EC2 instances to train your, uh, and deploy your jobs. But I guess we'll talk about those along the way too. So let's get started with the high level services. So the first one, in no, in no particular order, the first one I wanna talk about is called recognition, right, with a K. Don't ask me why, but I don't know. Maybe it's a typo that, you know, made it to the official website and then nobody dared fix it. I don't know, there must be a reason for that. Um, so this service is about understanding visual context, okay? So images. This was released um, over two years ago now. And basically it has a number of features to each feature corresponds an API. So you would get this done with one API call, object and scene detection. So pass an image or, or read an image from S3, call the uh, uh, detect object API, and this is what you would get, okay? So this is a snapshot from the AWS console. Uh, in real life, calling the API, you would get a JSON document with that information, but uh, JSON has never been uh, really designed for humans. So I'm trying to avoid you, JSON in my slides. Uh, so here you'll see uh, you know, a bunch of people and, uh, and for, so the JSON answer would have um, the actual coordinates for each of the boxes, a label for each of the boxes, so all of them are people, I suppose, 
And you would also get some labels with the detect label API. So a list of words that describe the visual context with a confidence score. Okay, in, in practice, you get many more. I just showed the top uh, six or seven here. You can also do facial analysis. So detect faces in images. Okay, so again, the answer would give you uh, the bounding box, the location of that face in the picture. And of course, there could be many pictures, many faces in there. This example just has one. And attributes, um, so uh, gender, age range, um, emotion detection, um, does that person wear glasses, sunglasses, does that person have a, have a beard, a mustache, etc., etc. What? Smiling but not happy, can it be? <laughs> uh, it's 93.2 is very high, right? So it's a good point, actually. <clears throat> it's, it's a good point. So um, those, as you probably know, if you do machine learning, these, these are, they look like percentages. They're, they're really, you know, they're really probabilities. So w what's the difference between 93.2 and the difference between uh, 94? You know, who knows? Um, I would say in my experience, anything higher than 99 is, is a very strong match. Um, and it all depends what your use case is, right? If you're using this for a fun app, it's okay to be wrong. If you're using this for a life critical scenario, right? Anything small, uh, lower than 99.9 .9 is probably risky, right? Or 99.5. So you have to take those numbers with a, a grain of salt and, um, and put them in context of your business use case. Uh, we can actually detect many faces. This is a picture, a bad picture, from a, a workshop I did in Greece, I think, last year. Uh, and, you know, we can see everybody in there. And, uh, and one extra thing that you get is what we call the landmarks, so the positions, uh, position of the eyes, nose, etc. Okay, and we get that information for every single face. Now, we can detect up to 100 faces. It's an arbitrary number that we set um, for latency reasons, right? And, you know, 100 faces are already quite a lot. Okay, but if I took a picture of all of you, assuming you know, you're all in the frame, um, that should work. Right. We can also do face search or face comparison. So in this case, it's face comparison, trying to match faces in one picture to the next. Um, so here again, it's a pretty simple example. We have only one face here and three, but it could be you know, 20 here and 50 here. And we would compare all the faces you know, two by two and list the matches. Okay, and again, 97, um, that could be, again, for this kind of app, it's fine. If it's a family app, it's fine. Um, if, if you need to do, uh, you know, face verification to let somebody inside the office, or, you know, if you're working for a bank or in the military, uh, 97 is probably too low, right? But again, you know, that picture is not so great. So if you're standing in front of a camera with proper lighting, you know, you would get 99.9 .9 something. Do you have any anti-spoofing detection here? I mean, like, detect if that's a 3D image and the loop yeah. sort of... <coughs> yeah, the short answer is yes. So if you try uh, putting a picture, it's, you know, it's, never, it's never quite right. It, it's, uh, you know, lighting is always weird. So yeah. it, it will, you know, it will do its best to figure out... Yeah, because there are several papers how they... Sure, to, uh, to spoof it. Uh, so and so you could do with two pictures or you could actually build a face collection So you could take a picture of everybody here create a face collection with the models of all your faces and Then uh, and then yeah, you could show up to the to the camera Coffee machine whatever and it would say hey Julian. Okay. Nice to see you again. You already had 29 coffees today So how about a glass of water for a change, right? Yeah. I was just questioning the no, 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 go ahead. Uh, two questions, actually. Uh, so the first one uh, regarding, do you have any well, on the website or some papers where you compare your, the accuracy of your model, with, let's say, with a face net with some other? Uh, but uh, no, but you can test it. Uh, okay. Yeah, just wondering if there is some publicly available. Uh, we, we generally, we we'll, you know we don't publish benchmarks mm -hmm. uh, because they're usually meaningless. Uh, this, that's, that's my opinion. They work in a specific in context. Wild, there is yeah. a public data set yeah. in the wild. Yeah, you could take reference data set and benchmark them. So I'm sure we do that internally. We don't publish the numbers. Uh, but my guess is if, if we're releasing the service, we must be doing okay on those benchmarks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and the second question was, uh, do you have to <coughs> provide some information what is behind this API? What kind of models? It's like a no. CNN app, so it's like a <laughs> 
No, those, those, no. Generally, we don't, we don't talk about implementation, um, and um, for you know obvious reasons and non-obvious reasons. Um, but we're more than happy for customers to uh, uh, to test this against other uh, other services and let us know how well we're doing. Okay, so if you're if you're testing. Uh, certain images and you think they behave really badly, uh, please get in touch and uh, we'll find a way to uh, share that data and, uh, and look at it. Okay, and we, we're, uh, like I say all the time, uh, your negative feedback is, is the oil that powers AWS, right? So I'm not sure my boss would agree with that. Uh, but that's the way I see it, right? We're happy to know we're doing okay, but we'd, we'd rather know what what's not working so well for you, and we'll fix it. So here's an example. It's a, it's a fintech in Africa, and they use recognition uh, for, um, actually for biometric uh, authentication. So uh, the, one of the problems for banking or financial services in Africa is it's possible that the closest uh, bank office is you know, hours away, right? Because um, it's maybe mostly in the city, so what if you're really far away from a city? And, and you can't really get access to a, to a bank. So what they do is uh, you register once to the app with, you know, with a, your passport or some kind of identity document with a picture. And then by using uh, a mobile app, uh, taking a picture of your selfie, literally, and, and, and checking uh, your face against the collection in, in recognition, uh, they, they can authenticate you. So I think this is interesting because it shows that recognition is actually considered reliable enough to uh, grant access to financial services. Uh, this is another example. It's a, it's a US company called Marinus Analytics. They build different things, but here they built um, a platform for law enforcement officers to uh, find missing children on the internet. So, you know, thousands and thousands of children go missing every year. And unfortunately, a lot of them end up being used for human trafficking, sex trafficking. So it's possible that their picture app actually appears on one of those dirty websites out there. But checking for that manually is just impossible. Even if you had 10,000 police officers, you could never have enough time to uh, uh, look at all those pictures and try to match them to the thousands of people who are missing. It's, it just will never work. right? Even if you have 100,000 officers, it doesn't work. Right, because we're talking tens of thousands of people on, unfortunately, probably billions of, of pages, right? Not to mention those people would probably go crazy uh, looking at those pages. So what they do here is they take the, the pictures from the kids, they build a face collection, and then they go and automatically crawl uh, all those pictures. And they also look at pictures that have been seized in investigations, videos, etc. And they're trying to match uh, one to the other. And uh, they have a good blog post on that story here. And they say that the first week they put this thing in production, they started matching their kids, right? And they could pass the information to, to uh, police officers and go and, and, and rescue them. So this is a really interesting example because it's AI for a, not a silly purpose for, one, for once. But it's also, it shows that a lot of AI is about doing simple things at crazy scale, right? If I showed you... Uh, 10 pictures, right, on a web page, and, and I, I ask you, okay, am I on this page or not? Okay, it, it would take you a few seconds to say, okay, yeah, that's you. Now, again, if you have tens of thousands of pictures and billions of web pages to look at, it, it's impossible. It's, it's not even possible. Okay, so AI is very good at that, scaling simple things. Another feature is image moderation. Um, so that's a concern if you are uploading user-generated content to your website. Uh, so I guess, you know, if you're running, if you're running a fashion website, right? Uh, if somebody wants to uh, display their uh, nice uh, fancy swimming suit, okay, why not? Okay, that's, that's perfectly fine. If it's a family-oriented website or a religious website or something like that, you know, that, there's nothing really wrong with that picture, of course, but it's not appropriate for your, your website. Okay, not to mention that in some culture, this is not acceptable in any way, ever. Okay, that's just the way it is. So, again, moderating content manually is, uh, is complicated. So, just call a recognition API and it will tell you 
from you know uh, mild stuff to very very explicit stuff what that picture is okay don't worry I'm not going to test it um, but then you decide based on the score you decide if you're happy with that or not okay uh, we can do celebrity recognition so finding people in uh, famous people in pictures so again bounding box this time we also give you the name you actually know who that guy is anyone knows yeah all right okay afro the child okay afro okay his, his mainstream career is not really interesting but uh, in the in the 60s he was doing a band called aphrodite child with vangelis if you like progressive rock which is as, as good as it gets okay shameless plug um, and so you'll get his name and you get uh, most of the time you get a url uh, either pointing to a wikipedia page or uh, imdb for actors okay and we actually index quite a few people in there so uh, um, artists actors politicians sports players etc so the thing that everybody wants to do is you know run that their football team through this um so i don't have a picture of uh, the uh, ukrainian football team but you go and try it right yeah, we do not have yeah? <laughs> <coughs> i'm sure you do come on i'm sure you do or, you, or any other team right Everybody here is a fan of Paris Saint-Germain, of course, so you, you can try Paris Saint-Germain, right? See if Neymar and Mbappé are picked up. I'm sure, I think they are. Um, another API is text in image, okay? Pretty much what it is, so here's a license plate here. And recognition again, this is an example of a JSON response for once. So you get the bounding box for the text, uh, you get the actual text, right? If you have multiple words and multiple sentences, you will get details for everything. Yeah. The question is here, so for this license plate recognition, is like a ready model deployed to the recognition that you can reuse, so there is something you need to train there is No, none of these need training. Um, this well, is all pre-trained on big data sets, so you simply call APIs and... and but actually, I believe this was pre-trained for the US, right? So let's say if you want to make the Ukrainian license plate... No, I'm sure it works. Uh, it's, it's not... Okay, it's a license plate here. Yeah, but... but <laughs> Yeah, like I said, Amazon has a lot of data, mm -hmm. right? I think we can ask about, can, can we uh, <laughs> train the model? No, I mean, the seriously, I mean, the, the, just not to make fun of this, but there was, I think last year, not this year, last year, reinvent, they, we launched a service for analytics called Redshift Spectrum. Okay, never mind that. Actually, it's actually very cool, but that's not my point. And they, they actually did a demo on querying one exabyte of data. Okay, that's 1,000 petabytes, if you were wondering. And they were querying one exabyte in minutes with that service. So I was wondering, where does that data come from, right? I mean, who has an exabyte of data? <laughs> well, I guess Amazon does have that. Yeah? No, we have a lot of data. So again, it's, it, try it. And if you, um, if you run into uh, uh, specific examples that really don't work at all, and you think they should, they're not complicated and not weird. Okay, if you try very weird fonts, you know, like logos get really weird. Okay, problem. it might not work very well. Um, handwriting, it depends. If you write in big block letters, it works. If you write normally, not like a five-year-old, it's not gonna work. It's really designed for, you know, uh, uh, again, license plates, uh, signs, road signs, that kind of thing. Can I ask another question? Sure, of course. So <coughs> I ask you regarding the offline predictions. Yep. And is it possible, let's say, to have this like recognition uh, in the offline mode? Let's say no, mobile? because it's the cloud. Yeah, yeah have, okay, so that's for the recognition of yeah. Yeah. Is there any plans to have this offline and like charge for... Like cloud in a box that you can put in your, on your desk? <laughs> I mean, okay, so like, uh, so that's a predefined model. So you, you, you don't allow to... No, these services are really, I mean, they're, they're, AP, they're cloud APIs. So they're cloud APIs. Okay, we, we can talk later about how, how would you build, you know, you could totally build something like this internally with so SageMaker. Right? All these services are, yeah, are online services. So, <clears throat> of course, the next step was to do this for video. So I'm not going to go through all those features again. So you can do the same thing for video files. It could be um, in batch mode. So if you have video archives in S3, you can run them through. Or if you have streams, okay? If you have live video streams, you can do the same thing. Okay, we have a specific service. Uh, pro probably you're familiar with Kinesis, our uh, messaging system. 
So you can write your stream to Kinesis video and that plugs into recognition. <coughs> and you can do all those same things on video streams live. Uh, of course, since we have multiple pictures, we can do more things like activity detection and uh, object tracking, right? Because we have multiple pictures. I, I don't know if you care much for uh, royalty, but uh, uh, you might have heard about this, uh, this royal wedding in the UK some time ago. And actually Sky News is a customer of ours. And they use recognition video to do real-time recognition on, uh, on guests, uh, on famous guests as they were entering the church. So uh, I guess, you know, any, anyone would know who, especially in the UK, who Elton John is or David Beckham is. Uh, now, if you can name the prince from the royal family of Lesotho, I, you know, I tip my hat to you. You know, I, I, I kind of know where Lesotho is. I didn't know they had a royal family. Uh, and I sure didn't know what the prince was called. So uh, yeah, that shows the depth of uh, that celebrity detection feature. Okay. All right, let's move on. So Polly, uh, Polly is the text-to-speech service. So uh, let's see if we have sound. Okay, so that's French, by the way. Um, and this is pretty much what, what Polly is. So you have a text string, you select one of 57 voices in 28 languages, you call an API and you get a sound file back. Okay, and it's fast enough for interactive conversation. Or of course you could save the file and play it later in your application. Is it possible to do the same with Alexa? <coughs> with? with Alexa API? Um, so Alexa is actually using the same technology. Uh, the difference is when you set up your echo device, you select a voice. I think today we have French, French, English, German. Do we have Hindi? I don't, I don't remember. We don't uh, have Ukrainian. Uh, no, we don't have Ukrainian, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have Ukrainian. We have, uh, so we have Russian. We have, uh, I could show you the list, but yeah, we have a few, a few languages. Did you read my slides? <laughs> so, no. So, this example, uh, this example was uh, just a vanilla text string, but you can use a markup language called SSML to uh, change the way the, the, the speech sounds. So, um, here's an example. So, okay, here we use this uh, prosody rate that will slow down the speech. Okay, so just slow it down and that makes it sound like, it, it makes you, like that, that salesperson is really annoying, I, yeah? 45 euros, you know, pay up or leave, right? <clears throat> no, it's not 40, it's 45, right? So by, by, you, by, uh, by slowing down, speeding up, etc., you can actually come up with all kinds of fun intonations. Um, so you can experiment. So this is really just one example, there are many more. One that I really like, is this one. So it's called breathing. It's exactly what you think it is. So hopefully you can hear it. You have to pay attention. Let's try that. Okay, so it's difficult to hear. I don't know. If you have proper audio, you, you will hear it. Oh yeah, we could try that. <coughs> okay, let's try again. Salut, je m'appelle Léa. Olivier est un service qui transforme le texte en paroles réalistes, vous permettant de créer des applications qui parlent et de bâtir une toute yeah. nouvelle gamme de produits dotés de paroles. Okay, so you hear okay, the inspiration. So this tag is called auto breath because you just say, okay, insert breathing pauses whenever you think that makes sense. Is there any right voice? Like so actually, you can, you can control it much more finely. I, mean, I don't have time, but there are examples where you can, it's very easy to make somebody sound out of breath or scared. Like, you know, <laughs> you know oh my God, machine learning, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> that kind of thing. It's very, it's very easy to do, right? And uh, if, you, if, you, um, if, you lead, if you ask, um, there are plenty of bedtime stories, you know, on, on, on echo devices and, 
And uh, you, you, the really good ones, they use that stuff to, uh, to, you know, to literally change the, the, the voice and make it sound more human. So <coughs> anybody uses Duolingo? Yeah, all right. So you know about that language app. It's a, it's a popular one. So if you use it, you know, very quickly you start listening to sound bites, okay? Um, and that's hopefully helping you learn. And they figured out that the quality of that voice is a strong factor in how well you learn. Okay, and that really appeal, that really, I, really, I really relate to that because French people are, are notoriously terrible at foreign languages, as all of you know if you travel to France and try asking a question to anybody, right? Uh, 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 I don't understand, right? It's probably the answer. And that's because we have terrible uh, English teachers. And they speak like that, <laughs> right? OK. So if you listen all day to somebody who speaks like that, you're never going to learn English very well. Huh? <laughs> so I blame it on the teachers, right? So they said, OK, um, we need to find the best sounding voice. So they tried Polly versus six other providers. And they, they ran an A-B test, and they, they measured how well students were learning. You know how well they were? Uh, uh, how well they were doing on the exercise, on the exercise, and they found out in every single case, Polly, that Polly won. Polly was the voice that led students to learn best. So that's what they use today for all the languages that Polly supports. Okay, Amazon Translate. You know, people people always complain about AWS service names being difficult to remember. You know, what is Kinesis and what is what is Redshift? So we heard you when we came up with Amazon Translate. <laughs> Right? And it's a translation service. So it can do real-time translation. Um, it will recognize the source language automatically. So that's, that's useful. And these are all the languages that it supports. OK? So you can pretty much translate from any of these to any of these, where uh, if we have a math people in the room, they'll figure out that a few language pairs are missing. Uh, and I think most of them are Chinese to something else. But you can, you can literally translate to, uh, to everything. So uh, let, let's give it a try, right? I'm going to take some risks. Okay, so. <coughs> okay, so we're going to try. Try this. Um. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I, sure. Uh, see, that's my. Yeah, I'm cheating. Uh, All right, okay. Um, okay, so let's do this now. Okay. Anybody speaks Indonesian? No. All right, sorry, me neither. How does that look? Pretty good? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, sure, because of course. And let's try to go back Polish. to the oh, oh, Polish, sure, if you can. Yeah? yeah. Is it kind of okay? Yeah. All right. And let's go back to French. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, just a little bit like bonne person. Oh, bonne yeah, bonne person. Bonne person means good people. Okay, it's, I guess you're good people. Right? Let's settle on that. <coughs> so you saw it's real time, you know, you can uh, actually, uh, uh, you can do that real time translation thing. And it's, it's one API call. It's called translate text, which I guess is a good name for it. Okay? 
Uh, so this is an example of a customer using this. So these guys, they, they actually build uh, cloud-based translation services, okay? So you, you display, you know, you can view your web page in, let's say, uh, uh, French, and, and you can translate every single word or sentence in, in French, or in English, or in Italian, or whatever, and in real time you see how it looks. And so these guys are in the translation business, but they realized that the, the actual translation part is not the high value part. The high value part is this, is the workflow, letting the user see the outcome. So they stopped trying to build their own models. They're using Amazon Translate instead, and they're focusing on building um, you know, the, the cloud IDE and the environment. So focusing on what matters to them and, and their customers. OK, Amazon Transcribe is a speech to text. Okay, and um, so again, we can do uh, we can do real time. So I don't have time for a demo, but I could actually try it. Um, there's a good uh, there's a good uh, example on GitHub for real time translation, a uh, real time transcription. Um, we can do those languages. It's a bit hard to read, but okay, um, U.S. and variants, French and variants, Italian and Brazilian Portuguese. Probably we had a big customer in Brazil who was asking for that. Um, so it's going to output the text, it's going to output punctuation, it's going to output timestamps. Um, it supports high quality audio and low quality. Low quality as in telephony, which is very important because this, a lot of uh, call centers are actually using this. No, Lex is the chatbot service. Ah, but okay. it also got the speech to text, no? Mistaken, built in, yeah, because of course you need to understand what the what the person says, but it's built in here. The so basically, it's better to use like if, you, if I need, let's say, speech to text, it's better to use the Amazon. Yeah, Lex doesn't give you the text string that was heard. Uh -huh. It it has that internally, but you don't get access to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that one is low level. Right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if uh, if if you have call centers and you want to transcribe lots of customer calls, and um, and, and run text analytics on that, then Transcribe can help you. Okay. Um, this is actually uh, one of our customers using this. They build an enterprise uh, platform for sales teams okay, to make sales teams more efficient. Right? I don't know if the platform actually kicks their ass you know, then, uh, but it makes them more efficient, I'm told. And one of the features is uh, VoIP, okay? running VoIP calls through that platform and it will automatically transcribe all the calls. So that's pretty nice because if you have an internal meeting, no one has to worry about note taking. And uh, so you actually have to pretend that you're listening to whatever is said. And if you have a customer conversation, you can focus 100% on what your customer tells you uh, and you, you, know, you don't have to worry about note taking. And once the meeting is done, you have the full transcription, you can edit it a bit and send it back to your customer. To, So accents, uh, that's a good question actually. Um, I, I, played or, I played with this one a lot. And uh, before it was used supporting French. Okay, so when it came out originally, I think it was just English uh, and, and Spanish. And when testing it in English, I had to pay lots of attention to my accent. I need to see if uh, Amazon uh, makes a mitigation in this field. Yeah, well, we actually, it's the reason why we have Australian English and, and uh, and British English, etc., is exactly that. It's because it, uh, unless you're really a U.S. native speaker, uh, even the British accent, yeah. which is probably easier to understand than the yeah. uh, Texas accent, uh, you know, the, their intonation is very different. Uh, so yeah, I, have to, I, I had to pay lots of attention to my own accent, uh, speak slower, etc., uh, really articulate. So that the service would understand me, but yeah, accents are uh, are, uh, are are they need specific work. You're right. Um, okay, next service, <coughs> Comprehend. So Comprehend is na uh, natural language processing. So you can use it in two ways. The first way is this: you take a document, uh, and then you call APIs to extract entities, so what are the persons, organizations, etc., that are mentioned here. Key phrases, so the important bits. If you have a two-page document, 
and you need to keep just the important bits. What are they? Language detection, and that's quite important because uh, if you have an automated workflow for, to process text, maybe, you know, probably you can, your workflow works for some languages and not others. So you could say, at least I can figure out which language is this. If it's uh, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Portuguese, blah, 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 then okay, my, my pipeline supports that. Uh, if it's uh, Ukrainian, then okay, I need to send it to a human who will process that manually. Okay, we can detect 100 languages. And sentiment analysis. Okay, so again, just, uh, just pass a document to those APIs and, and get the job done. Okay, let's see an example maybe. Does sentiment analysis recognize irony? Uh, no, actually, um, it, it's, uh, I've, uh, uh, I have this discussion often, like, you know, irony, sarcasm, propaganda, <laughs> that would be great, right? Uh, well, detec detecting propaganda is probably easier than detecting irony, I think. So let's take a look. Uh, comprehend, where are you? Okay, so here's a, a bit of text about Amazon. Okay, and so I can see, uh, or, uh, so entity extraction, right? So organization, location are picked up with a high confidence. Uh, key phrases, okay, that's, it's a bit silly here because the, the text is pretty short. Language is English. Sentiment analysis is neutral. Okay, and yeah, syntax gives you, oh yeah, syntax, that's a new thing, um, or well, relatively new. So syntax will tell you what every word is, okay, is it a, is it a word, is it an adjective, etc., etc. It's useful in some scenarios. Okay, so um, you can now train uh, custom entities. So let's say you need to extract... Uh, entities that are really specific to your business, like maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, legal entities, right? Or you, have, you have some jargon to deal with. So you could actually train, <coughs> so you could do custom classification as well, and custom entity recognition. So you could train a model, upload your list of entities, and train a model. So uh, it's one of the few services that allows you to customize. Okay? And we actually released... <coughs> Sorry, um, a version for medical uh, medical content. Uh, so every, every time you go to the doctor, you know you have your prescription or your exam report, and you try to read it, and it's you know it's like what? Well, so am I going to die or something? Um, and it's impossible to figure out because they, there's so much jargon in there, and uh, yeah, you you never. It's it's meant for another doctor. It's not meant for you. So we build a specific version that looks at. Uh, medical text and does entity extraction and entity relationship. So for example here, you know, this is the name of a medication, it's picked up, okay, but we can actually understand that this is the dosage, this is the route, so how, this means PO means uh, orally, so you sh it's a pill you should take. Uh, and this is the frequency, right? So it's not just entity recognition, it's also entity relations. So that's pretty good because now you can <clears throat> you can use this structured information and store it somewhere, and then it's easier to query than full text searches. Okay, um, what was the dosage for uh, uh, that patient uh, last week? Right? Did that what what medication did that uh, uh, patient get, and what was the dosage? That's not a question you could answer with full text searches, right? So here it's it's pretty easy to build. So, Comprehend Medical, nice if you have uh, healthcare customers. <clears throat> um, and the other way you can use Comprehend is uh, it's called topic modeling. So, topic modeling is quite different. So, topic modeling starts its unsupervised learning. So, you start from um, a, a, a large collection of documents, okay? 
and you want to group them in a number of groups, right? So it, it's kind of similar to clustering, um, but this applies to text. So let's say you work, you know, for a newspaper and you have a one million articles um, and they're not organized, they're just, you know, one million files and you want to group them in eight topics, right? So you would just literally put those documents in S3, ask Comprehend to build eight topics. So it's going to run for a bit and then it's going to output the, the list of topics. So a list of topics is actually going to be a, a list of words that are interrelated, okay, with respective weights. So if you have lots of, uh, you know, stock market um, articles, then probably that topic will have words like uh, revenue, earnings, uh, a CFO, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you have lots of uh, US politics, it's going to have words like uh, White House and Congress and Donald Trump and Twitter and God knows what else. And if you have lots of machine learning algorithm, it's going to say uh, <coughs> algorithm, model, data set, etc. Okay, so a topic is really a group of words that are related. So that's, you get the list of topics and you get for uh, each of those documents, you get a score for each of the topics, right? So you would know that a given document scores, you know, 0.52 on the stock market and 0.02 on machine learning, etc., etc. And this is very, very little information, right? It's just the name of the document and then the scores. So you could actually put that somewhere in a database or a cache and you could have very fast queries on give me uh, recent articles that talk about Washington and that score at least 70% on Washington and 20% uh, and on the stock market. Okay, and again, this is a much more efficient way than doing full text searches. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, how many topics uh, there are going to be? <coughs> is it a hyperparameter that you can choose? Yeah, absolutely. You decide how many topics you want. Okay. okay? Um, so here it's eight, but if you want to build, uh, you know, if you want to build twenty, you can build twenty, right? Um, you, you, and, and then you, know, you you might iterate a bit. Uh, either you know, okay, you could say, all right, um, I know I've got, yeah, you, yeah, but, and you know, that's that's not a concern for this service. You know, I don't think we build that one to make a lot of money, honestly. Yeah, it's really it's really really inexpensive. Um, so if you already know how many topics you have, you know, because, you know, you know that you have, you know, finance, sports, entertainment, you, you know, kind of come <coughs> common sense, uh, if, use that. If you really don't know, you know, you can experiment. Uh, <coughs> unit, uh, each uh, unit inside of the group, it should be a unique or <coughs> unit can be present in several groups. For example, if it's storm in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, so again, each document will be scored on all the topics. Uh -huh. So you have a score. If you have eight, uh, yeah, eight topics, each document will have eight scores. It's like with the image net, right? So when you have a classified image. Yeah, it's, it's a probability that, you know, it's a probability for each of the topics. Okay? Yeah. May I ask a question? Sure. So not uh, particular about this case, but just in general. So let's say uh, for the image recognition, right? So we imagine I'm a data scientist, and usually when I'm working, let's say, with the Python libraries or etc., when I'm implementing the custom models, I'm pretty flexible, and I have at least the tools, how can I improve the model? Hmm? With, let's say, Amazon recognition, okay, that's for sure I can set the, in like 15 minutes, I can have the baseline. But let's say if the baseline is not enough, so what options I have as a developer just to increase it? You work with SageMaker to build your own model. Ah, okay. So, I guess, yeah, Comprehend, <coughs> Comprehend um, Entity Extraction, the one I just showed you. I think that's the only spot where you can actually train custom models. People ask us, hey, can I train a custom recognition model as well? So, I, you know, I guess we're looking at it. Add my own pictures and, you know, why not? But looking at it. Okay, Comprehend Medical, I showed you. Okay, and then I'm getting to the final three, uh, which are still in preview. So preview means they're not available to everybody right now. But if you're interested, you can go to the AWS website, uh, find the page for text tract, and you can ask and join the preview. Okay.
So I think I'm in there. So text track is OCR++, okay? Uh, something that people have been asking for a long time. So extract information, extract text from, from uh, printed documents. Uh, what I mean by plus plus is it's not just the text. You can also extract tables and forms. You can extract structure, okay? And again, you will get a JSON answer that gives you the exact structure of the document, okay? Which is much better than just the text. So let's try an example. Is it much better than the Sarah? Um, I, I, again, I haven't, I haven't tested it. I know that Tesseract has recently moved to, uh, to neural networks. Um, they, they use LSTM. Um, I, I've played with it. I haven't compared it to this. Um, but I, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think Tesseract outputs structure. Uh, well, actually, they, 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 they do not have the table replication, mm. but at least they can position where Yeah, they have some, po yeah, yeah. some yeah. Here you really can see the table. So let's try it. Where is you? Where is the extract? Here it is. Okay, so. Well, you are doing this, just another question regarding, say, the security. Because most of the companies probably say banks, right? Because, uh, well, they will have some uh, issues sending their documents with CRF into the cloud. Is there any option to have this on premise? No, I don't think they have any issues with that. Uh, we have tons of banks running on the AWS. Uh, so, yeah, we have governments running on the AWS. But even that's still, but uh, some would <coughs> say some of the IT. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but no, I'm not kidding about governments and banks. But, <coughs> but what I mean is, some of our customers, have, they have the tightest security requirements. We have NASA, we have, like, you know, again, lots of federal administration stuff from, from the US and other parts of the world. So, my short answer is, if you think your business has tighter security requirements than NASA, the US government, or uh, top 10 banks, okay, I'm happy to have that discussion. <laughs> But, you know, and it's okay, it's okay to have the discussion, you know, I, I don't want to, no disrespect, it's, it's fine to have the discussion, but let's say at this stage we're pretty confident we'll have the security measures that you need, okay? Then if you're, if you're part of the people who think that their servers are safer because they can see them, <laughs> right, garlic and, you know, holy water and <laughs> silver bullets, yeah, that too, right? So, so here's, here's a, a real example. It's my phone bill from uh, December, right? So my, you can see my name, right? So that's my phone bill. So <coughs> let's, uh, let's try and, and run that thing. So you can either do a single page. So single page, you can upload an, an image like this. Or you can do multi-page and you can upload PDFs, OK? Low Wi-Fi. Does it have any possibility to train with the text? No, uh, for now it's um, it's a printed printed text for now. Okay. But yeah, a lot of people, you know, AWS customers are never happy. They, they've been, they've been asking for this for two years. The minute we release it, it's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> doesn't do handwriting. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll get to work. Bill recognition, but usually this kind of bills looks pretty nice. Yeah. But in reality, when you take a look on them, that's if even the person can uh, have difficulties to yeah. identify. No, handwriting is very complicated. So, uh, actually, I, I did a presentation in Scotland uh, last year, and there was a gentleman from um, the, the archives, the National Archives of Scotland, and we were talking about OCR. I don't remember when. This was not available. It's like, do you think you could build a service that would be able to read ancient Scottish? <laughs> and I, it's like, yeah. All right, yeah. I'll, Just give us a label of data. Not sure it's, it's top of the list, but. <laughs> you know, freedom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love you guys. I love Scotland. OK, so what do we see here? Um, OK, so we see the raw text. OK, we could click on bits and. All right, that's my name. Yeah, you can see the blue box moving on the left. Yeah? 
Uh, so th this one doesn't have forms, but this one sure has a table, right? So here, of course, it's a visual representation of the table. You would get a JSON document with the actual structure of the table. Okay, so that, that's the amount. Okay. So we see the columns, we see, we see the lines. So it's pretty cool. This, you know, people are, again, I've been waiting for this for a long time. So I'm sure it's, uh, it's going to come out of preview very, very quickly because it's a lot of people want to test this. Okay. And it's fair to say this is not easy to build. So um, a lot of people have been trying to build this one. And uh, yeah, we're happy to, to bring it to them. So text tract. <coughs> All right. Um, the next one in preview is called forecast. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little later as well. Um, so this is about time series. Okay, time series data. I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, sales uh, or you know whatever Bitcoin prices. Although, you know, you don't need machine learning to know where it's going. Um, so trying to forecast product sales, trying to forecast, you know, inventory, supply chain, etc. And this is really, really hard to do at, at scale. Uh, so yes, if you have data scientists, if you have machine learning engineers, they can build something. And, you know, this, something lower level and SageMaker g gave them the possibility to do that. But we made it much easier. Okay, now it's, I, I can promise anyone in this room can do this in 15 minutes, okay? You bring your data in a CSV file, okay? So just simple format, you need to use some keywords so that forecast knows exactly what is what, um, but that's no big deal. Um, upload this to, uh, <coughs> to S3, uh, create a data set in forecast, and then you can select uh, uh, what we call uh, business recipes, so if you want to predict, let's say, sales, we have specific steps for that. But all you say is, hey, this is, these are sales time series, so please use that uh, recipe. And, and, uh, and we apply pre-processing and we use specific algos, etc. It's fully, fully automated. And of course, we learned a lot from the Amazon.com uh, experience. If you're trying to uh, forecast supply chain, uh, series again it's a specific recipe so select that click wait for a bit and then you have a model that you can deploy and predict with okay so fully managed infrastructure and uh, and really zero machine learning required right you can tweak you can bring custom recipes if you want but if you want to keep defaults and click 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 uh, you're going to build um, a good model it has a lot of best practices uh, built in Okay, so that's a very, very cool service. This was very difficult to do previously. And in the same spirit, we have a service called Personalize to build recommendation models. Okay, and recommendation is really one of the harder <coughs> things in machine learning. Everybody wants to show product recommendations on, on their website, right? Anyone working in retail? Okay, so yeah, everybody wants to see, you know, products you may like or whatever, movies you may like. Um, but it's very difficult to build, especially at scale. And again, um, Personalize lets you do that um, with minimum fuss, right? Uh, I actually wrote the, the blog post when this came out. Um, <coughs> I think the simple scenario is really five API calls. Right? Upload the data or create the data set group, upload the data, um, select, uh, cre cre train a model, deploy the model, and, and then generate a recommendation. Okay, again, anyone in this room can do it. Absolutely anyone. Um, previously, this was pretty complicated. Okay, so uh, we're done with our marathon through the, uh, the AI services. Um, so uh, there's one I didn't talk about. I had to sacrifice one, and I sacrificed Lex, uh, the chatbot service. Uh, not because I don't like it, because you know, it, it's been out there for a while and demonstrating it properly takes a little bit more time than the other ones. But you can, if you're interested in chatbots, please read about Lex. Um, so in, I guess we'll have a break because we all need uh, actually, coffee. Uh, we have 10 extra minutes okay. for some questions. Yeah, well, of course, question. 
<coughs> and then we'll talk about SageMaker. So um, if you're exhausted already and you want to run away and cry in your bedroom, um, that's fine, that's fine. Happens sometimes. Um, just keep an eye on those resources. So the first one is the most important because it shows you how to use AWS for free, right? So everybody's interested in that. So just go to that URL, create an account, and in the next 12 months, you can use all the services listed there, and uh, pretty much all the AI services are actually uh, in the free, what we call the free tier. So the list of services and uh, the usage level, right? So of course, if you, you know, if you call those APIs a billion times, yeah, you're gonna, uh, unfortunately, you're gonna get charged, but there's really more than enough uh, to, to, to test it, right? If you're curious about recognition in Nepali and you want to test for zero dollar, uh, go to that page, create an account, make sure you read very well the, the usage limits and then go and, and try it, right? Uh, there are no test accounts for AWS, right? So you, you create an account and you have access to all services. Okay, so you can do that in five minutes. Um, ML.AWS is the high level page for um, all things machine learning at AWS. So uh, service pages, customer stories, uh, pricing, documentation, everything's there. Um, we recently launched what we call the machine learning university. So if you're really just beginning with machine learning, you're a complete newbie. Um, or if you already know some stuff, but you want to learn more, this is a great place to go. It has about 40, 45 hours of online classes. It's completely free, no tricks. Again, if you have an AWS account, you can go in there and watch all those videos and run all those examples for free. We have a machine learning blog, uh, which is uh, more technical, but you can see some, uh, some examples of what customers are building and some code, etc. And I also have a blog on Medium where I post lots of stuff on SageMaker these days. That's really my, uh, my focus. And, uh, and by now, I also have a lot of silly videos on YouTube from previous talks. So uh, if you're curious, if you want to uh, dive deeper on certain topics, you know, go, and, go and take a look. Um, probably you'll find something that's useful. Okay. And uh, so uh, thank you. We have time for questions. And uh, I'll, I'll just say this say it now, and I was, I'll stop repeating it. If you want to stay in touch, this is my Twitter account. So if you want to yell at me uh, next week because you tried recognition and it didn't work at all, or or you think you know this sentence in po in Pali sounds completely stupid? You know, you know, just yell at me. That's fine. That's fine. Because I, th I take that and then I yell at the Seattle people. So. Right? I'm I'm the, I'm the yelling middleman. So uh, it's okay. You actually give me a, give give me stuff to yell at them. So that's that's fine actually. All right. But please stay in touch if you're curious about uh, all the new stuff, uh, all the new machine learning stuff that comes out. Um, I usually tweet it, and I don't tweet cats and dogs and silly stuff, right? There's enough of that on Twitter, so you know, you're pretty safe if you follow me. You won't, you won't get offended too much, right? Okay, uh, let's take more questions and, uh, and uh, have a break and uh, have coffee and calories and everything you need because the next session is going to be real intense, right? This one was good. All right, thank you.